Hey, this is Big Yard Court. Now, in this video, I'm going to be going through the um, Death in the Family murder mystery on the Dartmoor level in Hitman 3. Now, when I first played this, <clears throat> I mean, it's not the hardest mystery to solve, um, but you do need to collect every clue if you want to solve the mystery because when I first played through it I got to a stage where I knew who the killer was but I couldn't present them as the killer because I didn't I didn't collect all the evidence so what I'm going to do is I'm going to timestamp the video as well so if you do want to avoid spoilers you can jump to certain sections and um, you know just to find the clues which you are missing and then you can present your evidence and you know uh, reveal who the main killer is. Remember if you find the video useful to hit the like button and also subscribe. Right, let's get into it. Right, so the first thing is your preparation. The things you're definitely going to need are the um, lockpick because you will need to enter some closed off areas and you're going to need the coins as well for distractions. The gun, yes, you're carrying it in, but you're not going to need it. I mean, you can't, you can't even really take it in. Well, not, not using this method anyway. This is a private area, sir. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. Right, so that's the private investigator, and you're gonna need to um, to, to take his clothes, use it as a disguise. Now, this dude does not break off to uh, to um, go into any like isolated areas, so you're gonna need to distract him, which is why I said you want to carry in the coins. So just hide in the bushes, and just throw some coins to lure him over. Throwing one directly in the bushes the first time never does a trick, so Man. getting close to the bushes and then throw the another one. And choke that bitch out. And take his disguise. Right, now you're gonna need to leave your gun behind because you are going to get frisk and you can't take your um you can't take your weapon in when being friss. Yeah, and then just calmly just just roll up to the maiden and let her carry you through the front door. Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Yes, please. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but... I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. <laughs> I've never seen the place <laughs> guarded like this. And uh, chick sounds and I like she's say, down I don't like or it something. At all. This is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. Looking good, man. Oh, I could just Looking cry. good. Yeah, I've been working out. All those carrying dead bodies, you know. This'll just take a Makes a kind of inch. Sir. Thank you. See, the gun ain't even needed. If I could have left the gun behind and just carried in the lockpick, fiber wire, and the coins, Mr. I would have been Whitmer, all good. Thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir.
Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. Right, so the a first place to investigate is the crime scene. I trust you'll get scene. to the bottom of this. There are six clues in this um, bedroom. The first time I played it, I actually missed one of them. Why don't you use your camera me. to scan the dead body, 47? And I even tried sitting down there to see if I could, um, if I could find the final clue, but there's nothing. So basically your detective mode um, doesn't find everything. Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Okay, so that was the first one. Now the laptop is the second one. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. By the way, um, keep an eye on your intel because it will tell you like how many you've got left in each location. So, so, so I know suicide number three. Note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Now, this is the one that I missed the first time. You need to take your camera out and scan the whiskey glass and the canter. I spent ages searching through this friggin' room and could not find it. <laughs> I thought to myself, use the camera. Okay, so that's number five, the hidden the room. Hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. And number six, the floor plan. Hmm. A photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. So, fairly easy. Literally the only one I had trouble finding was the whiskey glass and decanter. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of other people missed that one as well. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here's the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects. Yeah, he does look suspect, but you know, Hopefully that will help you examine all the finding. evidence. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Right, so all the family members can be found close this by each other. This is very useful information, 47. So I would say deal with them first. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity. So if you go for this, um, this door, you so it's basically on the left-hand side of the stairs. Or perhaps stairs. you prefer searching the manor for clues first. And it is the first family member with Patrick the terrible dressings. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. 
Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. Yeah. I mean, how well, the fuck am I supposed to cope for an entire stroll. weekend in this <laughs> shit? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. Each of the suspects, apart from the butler, will have three lines of questioning, exactly. so go through Creepy each one of them. No ambition. Imagine they'll give an alibi, they'll you know, talk some shit about another exactly family member, to be two of a kind. and he they'll say if they saw anything suspicious. Him, then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. So I just want to shoot it? this bitch, man. Did you see anything suspicious last night? I might no. do it on the next play for this mission. I reckon Zachary <laughs> topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Like I said, they talk shit about each other. Right, so when you go for the question then it will all be available in the intel and you move on to the next one. So then if you go through this door by the stairs and just walk straight on. So it is your next suspect. Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. I'm not actually going to go Patrick, through, like, Gregory all their alibis. I'm just going to show you where they are, and then you can listen you know, to them yourself. I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Then, if you walk through the episode, opposite room, there are two suspects. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Mm -hmm. Everyone can attest to that. Yeah. Now, this guy is my favorite. He gives zero shits. <laughs> Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I had a <laughs> quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, uh, Zachary was very much alive when we left. Right, so the final uh, family member can be found in the next room, usually playing the piano. Oh, I, I could listen all day. He pours emotion into that. You actually have to wait for him to finish and get up before you can before you can question him. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh yes, this. Dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting. Right, so now if you look at your intel, that will eliminate Edward and Gregory as two of the suspects because their alibis match. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to check out the alibi for the annoying um, the annoying grandson with the glasses and the bad dress sense who needs a slap and a bullet in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and question some of the staff. Okay, so it is on the map. And all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. Oh, you mean like Chris? 
He treated me like shit. All Rosie. he wanted to do was play his stupid video You're just games. A Never any romance. I deserve Can I have to romance. Deal with it and move on. Ah, Rosie, hi there. tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. Yeah. When he looks at yeah, you, we know you exactly feel like what the center there. of the universe. Like a real princess. Don't but worry, I'll put a button in his head to her. make up for it next page. under a lot of pressure. But He's that has basically That's just cleared um Did just cleared the annoying shit the because it's provided him an alibi. Strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside. Except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. So this is basically um, incriminating the mother. Okay, so it's cleared in. So now the only suspects are the two women and the butler. Right, so both women had alibi, well, had excuses that they were in their rooms at the time of the murder. One was on a um, video call and the other one had a migraine. So we're going to check out their rooms for evidence. So I'll just show you where they are on the map. So I'm going to Emma and Gregory's room first. With a handsome face like that, I bet you've worked for them. Oh, we? Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Right, so the room is locked. And this maid is right there. Do I like him? Or that door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. So you you got two options. One, you can distract the maid and then um, unlock the door uh, with the lockpick. Unless you get the master key. I'll show you where to get that later. Hello, sir. Or the other option is you can access it from outside. So just climb through this window and you're just going to shimmy along to the... Um, to the balcony off that room. Okay, right, so there's no evidence out on this balcony. I did check. I couldn't find nothing. But you can just walk straight in. Because the door is unlocked. Right. So, evidence. Okay, so use your detective mode. This isn't evidence, but, um, you know, it doesn't hurt to have an extra weapon. You know, so when you get to Madame Carlyle, you can choose how you want to kill her. Right, so first now, piece of evidence. this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. Big piece of evidence right there. Like I said, your detective view will pick up most of it. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Okay. So this cane is number three. Can't do anything with it, and you can't. If you walk out of it, I think um, I think the detector has a weapon. I might try it on the next playthrough. 
But this is the this is the bit that I missed. And it was do my head in, but this is this is the bit you miss. Remember when you can't find evidence anywhere, get the camera out. But that is the fourth piece of firm evidence. So now this room is clear. And you could just unlock it. It's fine, you don't even have to unlock it. It just unlocks from the inside. I do actually like how some of the NPCs will actually react to when you walk close to them. Okay, so the next room we need to check is um, Rebecca's room. How are you today, sir? That is the door to Rebecca's room. Obviously, make sure no one's around and then use that lockpick because there's no open windows for this room. Okay, so only two bits of evidence in there. There's the laptop. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. Okay, so that basically clears her. So we've got two suspects left. There's Emma and then there's the butler. And that is the second bit of evidence. To me ages to find that because there is a um, secret room in, um, in this area which I immediately thought would have been the second bits of evidence but it's not it's just lower added extra now although this isn't um, evidence check the little mini map to see where your target is because if you look through the people while she's in the room as you can see you unlock another little trophy all the transfers of funds and privileges I've been through have been bulletproof. Okay, so that's that room cleared. Okay, so still it is just um, Emma and the butler. So Emma was after um, inheritance in it in the castle, but we need to check out the butler's office as well. So the butler's office is right next to the staff room. That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Again, this is why I said bring that lockpick. Right, now we go in, here is the mansion master key. So, I mean, one thing you could do, I suppose, is come into this room first and then you'll get the key and then you can unlock any room in the house. And then it won't look suspect. You won't have to um, worry about them seeing you with the lockpick. All right, so first bit of evidence. And then second bit. Again, pretty easy to find. Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Mm. So right now, the butler is still a suspect because he's implicated in the previous murder, in covering up the previous murder. But there is one more bit of evidence in this room. Painkiller. Lethal, if you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? 
Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. And this is where Maybe you get you to make a choice. Maybe you tell you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? Right, so, basically, if you go hey, to the you? butler, he will take you to your target. Now, when you go in there, you will only the be butler. able to implicate Mr. the butler. Ferns you can't actually Zachary. implicate Ferns. the person who you think oh, that it... got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Get any kind of explanation. So it will get you there. But if you want to solve the mystery, you need to go to the greenhouse in the garden. Because remember, in Emma's room, she had um, a keychain for um, the greenhouse. Right, now, this bit of footage I recorded before I found the master key. So, I'm not actually sure if the master key will work in the greenhouse or not. So, um, to access it, I actually use the lockpick. But you need to make sure there's no witnesses around to see you doing it, otherwise they'll come for you. Okay, so entering the greenhouse um, is the first bit of the evidence. Just Broken basically lab equipment. opening up the door. It looks like it was recently now, used. Now remember, the poison used on the victim was plant-based, so it was actually created in it. You can actually um, create um, some more poison by picking up these plants. Then you need the wrench as well to repair the. Um, the kit and the wrench could be found in this part of the garden basically behind the water fountain creating the poison doesn't have anything to um, to do towards finding the clues but it's just something that you can do okay so um, for the second part of the um, so for the second clue, you will need to get your camera out again. Right, and it is this book. This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison. And that's it. To that, that's both um, bits of evidence for the greenhouse. So now you have collected all evidence One thing is and you can go and present it to the butler. Female, age 65 to 79. 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Yeah, allow that slow ass walk. Let's <laughs> just go straight to the to the target. Yeah, this is Madame Carlyle's office. Please step inside. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. You've still got options to accuse the butler, but let's, let's um, solve this. Emma Carlyle murdered your brother, Zachary. My niece? Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Inbreeder. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emma's mother, Jane, who was the fiance of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. 
She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emma to reclaim what she lost. Marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the <laughs> gallery to speed up her installment as the lady of the house. Seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? Right, now, when I got to this bit, I decided to do a manual save. Because you can take the money or you can take the case file. So, save it, if you want to check like both options. And then, uh, once you do one, you can go back and, and do the other. You know, play around with it a bit. I'll send you an invoice. Thank so I went for the money this time round. I trust you'll see yourself out. I need some privacy. Thank you. Right, so this is your opportunity to kill her now. Because she goes out on the balcony by herself. You just go through this little side this little side door into the balcony. And you can go and kill her however you want. You know, I did pick up some knives. So, I thought, you know, I picked up a knife and letter book opener, so I thought I might as well, you know, put them to good use. How does she not hear me stepping, stepping up to her? And slick goes for... Yeah. That's Madame Carlyle taken care of. Time to get the file on Arthur Edwards. And now this is the issue, getting the case file. Because you go in, and I know where it is. You got one, how many guards you got? You got it's obviously buying that painting. So you got one, two, three. I think there's another one or two behind. Another one. So four guards. I have no guns. All I got is a knife and a little opener. Right? And they just go out and they see it. I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... So this is a smart way of doing it. Oh, I see. I expected you might show up, but to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I wish I'd I could like to see her as part dead. of the mission, but. You no. are the mission granny. What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way then. I might have to murder the entire family, like, on another playthrough. But for now, let's get that case file. And then deal with her. The file you want is in the safe. God, I hope you get Edwards and make him hurt. I need some privacy. How are you, sir? Thank you. I think when I've unlocked more of this level, I'm going to have to come in with machine guns and just kill everybody. Good work, 47. <laughs> That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. All right, so Time let's to take the... care of Madame Carlyle. Yeah, let's go for accident of death. Let's just throw ass over the balcony. <laughs> it was an accident. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Right, now while I was exploring earlier, I did actually find the keys for this hearse. So, so that is how I'm going to escape.
Right, so silent assassins it. Right, so <clears throat> I'm hoping you found this useful. That's a good time, actually, 58 minutes. Yeah, hopefully you found this video useful. I am still finishing off the game. I've got like one or two um, missions left in the campaign to complete. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to um, check out some of the other modes and do a review, hopefully within the next few days. So if you found the video useful, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and you know, keep an eye out for more content. I think I might do some um, contract killer videos like I did for Hitman 2, which you can you can check them out if you want to go through my older videos as well. Alright, thanks for watching.